electrical and electronic industries. It is a high value for the electrical and electronic industries. Why? Because it's uh, excellent in a dielectric strength. Mica. Mica is excellent in a dielectric strength. It's dielectric strength. Low power loss factor. It's low power loss factor. Power loss factor. Insulating properties. Third, insulating properties. Fourth one is the resistance to the high voltage. That's why the mica used for the electronics and electrical industries. <clears throat> I'm again repeating as a mica use widely for the electrical and electronic industries. Why? Because because of its low power loss factor, because of its insulating properties. Third, its excellent dielectric strength. Dielectric strength. And fourth, resistance to the high voltage. Resistance to high voltage. It is a mineral made up of a series of very thin plates or leaves. It splits easily into the ultra thin layers. India is a leading producer and exporter of mica in a world market. It contributes the 60% of our total world's production. Mica is exported to Japan, Russia, US, US and other European countries. It is exported through the Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam ports. Mica generally found in India. Mica extracted in India through the Kodarma Gaya Hazari Bagh. In Jharkhand, Kodarma, K O D E R M A, Kodarma. Gaya and Hazari Bagh and Hazari Bagh of Rajasthan. I'm again repeating as a Kodarma, Gaya and Hazari Bagh of Jharkhand. Jharkhand, Ajmer, Ajmer, Bewar, B E A W A R, Bewar and Udaipur of Rajasthan. Ajmer, Bivar, and Udaipur of Rajasthan, and Nellore of Andhra Pradesh. Nellore, N E W L O R E, Nellore of Andhra Pradesh. Mica extracted through the three of the important states of Jharkhand in Jharkhand, Gaya, Kodarma, and Hazari Bagh. In Andhra Pradesh, Nellore, N E W L O R E. In Rajasthan, as a Ajmer, Udaipur, and Bewar. These are the important sites to which as a mica extracted, and India is basically exporting mica directly to the Japan, Russia, US, and the European countries through Calcutta and Vishakhapatnam ports. Through Calcutta and Vishakhapatnam ports. Next one is as limestone. Limestone is basically used as a raw material for a smelting of iron. Smelting of iron, for which as a limestone use. <clears throat> limestone is generally extracted in India through the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks. In India, presently there is the limestone extracted from the age of a Gondwana. Gondwana age of, age of limestone extracted in India. Extracted in India. Extracted in India. And 75% and above production of a limestone is used to the cement industry in India. Cement industry. C-E-M-E-N-T, cement industry in India. Karnataka is the leading producer. Karnataka is the leading producer of limestone in India. Limestone in India. Karnataka is the leading producer of limestone in India. So these were the non-metallic minerals. Next are the 
Next is the conservation of the minerals. Conservation. Conservation of minerals. So as we learned in the first chapter, as a, most number of resources are very limited in number. As per their limited in nature and more demand for the growth, more demand for the regularization of a development and a growth, we need to conserve the minerals for the future. So minerals are important natural assets of human. They are the exhaustible in nature. It means that the minerals are available in fixed quantity and incapable of being replaced or replenished in a shorter tenure of time. Most number of minerals are used in our industries, transport, agriculture, and all these are dependent on it. Dependent on it. Without the use of minerals, not any of the economy of the world can survive. They can't survive without the use of minerals. The minerals are inseparable, indis indispensable role in human growth. Indispensable growth in human, this human growth, for which as we have to use for conservation of minerals, which can be as a possible through the different ways. First, over exploitation of minerals should be checked. Should be checked. In the first chapter, Mahatma Gandhi's statement, there is enough number of resources are available in our country not to satisfy, not to satisfy the greed of all. <clears throat> so on that principle, so we have to check upon the over exploitation of minerals. Over exploitation should be checked. Over exploitation should be checked. Second, use of minerals in a planned and judicious way. Use of minerals in planned and judicious way for sustainable development. For sustainable development. Third is wastage of minerals. It should be minimized. It should be minimized <clears throat> at mining when we extract it at the time of extraction, transport, processing, and consumption. We have to minimize the wastage of minerals at extraction, extraction, processing, transport, transporting, and consumption and consumption. Both one is exports should be minimized. Most number of minerals from our country, they are, export, they are exported towards other countries for earning of a hard currency, dollars. Such currency has used to complete the other needs of our economy, other needs of society. So we have to check upon that. We have to check that the exports of a minerals should be minimized. If the minerals, it will be utilized in our country within the economy, then to which as people, they, they can earn as a good income. They can earn the good income. <clears throat> Next, recycling of a metals like as a steel, tin, aluminium, gold, silver, it should be as emphasized on a priority basis. Recycling of metals. Recycling of metals. Next one is the substitutes of our minerals we have to use. We have to use the substitutes of minerals, preferably on a, we have to emphasize over the such minerals which are av available in abundance. For example, at the place of a iron, we have to emphasize over the aluminum. This is as a best substitute of iron, aluminum. <clears throat> substitutes of minerals, it should be increased in economy. Next one, seven, processing technology for the extraction of metals efficiently, even from low grade ores should be improved. Processing technology for the extraction of metals efficiently, even from low grade ores should be, low grade ores should be improved. So through which as we can possible, through which we can make as a possible changes 
and conserve the minerals for the future generations. Otherwise, as such minerals, they will be vanished from nature, vanished, finished from nature, and as economy, it can be as a regular, it can't achieve as a level of a sustainable development. If the regular conservation of a minerals not occur side by side, not side by side, then under such circumstances, the, it will impact over a development. Clear? It will impact over development. It will impact over the development. Next is, are the energy minerals. Energy minerals are categorized into two categories, conventional and non-conventional. Conventional and non-conventional. Conventional minerals and non-conventional. <laughs> conventional minerals, those minerals which are used by the humans from an age-old historical background, from a longer tenure of time, used by the humans for, to complete their need of, to satisfy their energy requirements. Those known as conventional minerals, Non-conventional minerals are those minerals which are used by the humans in a recent in time. Recent in time. Conventional minerals are non-renewable non in nature. Non-conventional minerals are renewable in nature. Conventional minerals, they increase the pollutants in environment. Whereas non-conventional minerals, they are the eco-friendly. Eco-friendly. Conventional minerals are limited in number. Conventional sources of energy are limited in number. Non-conventional sources of energy are abundance. They are in a larger quantities. Conventional minerals, they can't use again and again. It can't replenish by the nature. It can't replenish by the nature. Whereas the, <clears throat> whereas the non-conventional minerals, non-conventional minerals, non-conventional minerals, non-conventional minerals, they can use again and again. They are replenished by the nature. Renewed by the nature. Renewed by the nature. Conventional sources of energy are coal, petroleum, natural gas, and non-conventional sources of energy are tidal energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, nuclear energy, etc. Clear? Let's start from the conventional sources of energy. Conventional sources of energy. As we uh, discussed, the mention that the conventional sources of energy are those which are used by the humans from a longer historical background, which are the coal, petroleum, natural gas. Natural gas. They have been used for energy production for quite some time, except water. These sources of energy are the exhaustible, exhaustible and non replenishable they cause environmental pollution, they are expensive also, and they are unevenly distributed over the earth. They are unevenly distributed over the earth. Clear? Distributed over the earth. So the first is a coal. First conventional energy mineral is a coal. So coal, coal is the prime source of a commercial energy in a modern economies of the world. It's basically used for industrial and domestic uses, industrial and domestic requirements. Coal contributes the 60 percentage of energy needs of our country. I'm again repeating as coal is a very important source of energy in our country in our country, which is used for a domestic and industrial requirements, it contributes the 60 percentage of energy needs of the country. So coal is the most 
most abundantly available fossil fuel the coal in our country there is basically as a different now different types of coals are uh, found the best quality of coal is known as anthracite anthracite a n t h r a c i t e a n t h r a c i t e this is as the highest best quality of a coal best or the highest quality of a coal which has containing the more than 80 percentage of carbon content more than 80 percentage of carbon content it gives maximum heat it gives maximum heat and less demand it is a black in texture black in color anthracite is a black in color found in jammu and kashmir which is found in jammu and kashmir it is found in jammu and kashmir anthracite second category of a coal is a bituminous b i t u b i t u b i t u first is a anthracite second is a bituminous third is a lignite fourth peat fourth is a peat so the second bituminous bituminous has been buried deep deep has been buried deep and is subjected to increase temperature and pressure temperature and pressure this category of a coal contains just 60 to 80 percentage of iron sorry carbon content 60 to 80 percentage of carbon content carbon content which is preferably used for metallurgical industries metallurgical industries metallurgical industries bituminous used for the metallurgical industries for smelting of iron for smelting of iron yes sir man log kar do sorry meeting unlock kar do bituminous lo in percentage of a carbon content 60 to 80 percentage of iron content iron content which is a gray in texture gray in texture it is used for the smelting of iron smelting of iron such type of a sorry smelting yes smelting of iron such kind of a coal basically used for such kind of coal basically extracted to the son godavari and the mahanadi basins s o n son mahanadi and godavari son mahanadi and godavari basins mahanadi and godavari basins first anthracite that category of coal used for in a manufacturing of steel manufacturing of steel second category bituminous coal used for the smelting of iron third lignite lignite it is a low grade brown coal it is a low grade brown coal which is mainly mined in a naveli mines of tamil nadu naveli n e y v e l i n e y v e l i naveli in tamil nadu n e y v e l i naveli mines of tamil nadu <coughs> it is specifically used for the thermal power stations thermal power stations it is basically used for the thermal power stations for generation of a electricity 
electricity. So that category of coal also accepted to the Assam, Rajasthan, and Jammu and Kashmir. Assam, Rajasthan, and Jammu and Kashmir, but preferably extracted from the neighbourly of a Tamil Nadu for a thermal power stations. Next, peat, least quality of a coal. Peat, P E A T, peat. P E A T. It has a low carbon and it is a low carbon content, less than forty percentage, less than forty percentage. Lignite consisting as a fifty to sixty percentage of a carbon content. Peat consisting as a less than forty percentage of a carbon content and high moisture. High moisture. With the burning of a, that kind of a coal, it emits as a more smoke. Due to the due to the moisture, it releases the smoke. It is preferably used for a domestic uses. Domestic uses. Such type of coal used for a domestic uses. With the burning of a, that kind of a coal, more smoke emits and a less energy. And less energy. More smoke and less energy emits to the, that category of a peat. That category of a coal. Coal is generally extracted in India through the two of the geo geological time periods. One as a Gondwana age of a coal. Gondwana age of coal. Second as the tertiary age of coal. Tertiary age of coal. Gondwana age of coal. Gondwana age, remember when the dis Pangea disintegrated into two parts, Gondwana and then Angara land. So it's that, that kind of coal extracted in India, which is in, in a category of anthracite and a bituminous. Tertiary age of a coal, when Himalayas came into existence, Himalayas, Himalayas came into existence. So Gondwana age of coal extracted through the Gondwana age of coal extracted through Extracted through Damodar Valley, Damodar in a West Bengal, Damodar Valley of West Bengal, Damodar Valley of West Bengal, Damodar Valley of West Bengal, Jharkhand Belt, West Bengal, Jharkhand Belt. Important mines are Jharia, J H A R I A. Jharia in Jharkhand, Bokaro in Jharkhand, Jharia and Bokaro of Jharkhand, and Rani Ganj of West Bengal. Rani Ganj, R A N I G A N G. Rani Ganj of West Bengal. Rani Ganj of West Bengal. Clear? Rani Ganj of West Bengal. Second, Godavari Valley, Godavari Valley, Singreni, Godavari Valley of Andhra Pradesh. Name of a mine is a Singreni. S A S I N S I N G E R N I. S I N G E R N I. Singreni. Godavari Valley. Godavari Valley of Andhra Pradesh. Godavari Valley of Andhra Pradesh. Godavari Valley of Andhra Pradesh. Singreni, Andhra Pradesh, S I N Singreni, Singreni, Andhra Pradesh. Third, Mahanadi Valley of Orissa, Mahanadi Valley of Orissa, Mine is a Tarchak, 
टी ए एल सी एच ए आर टी ए एल सी एच ए आर टी ए एल सी एच ए आर टचर सोन वैली ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ एस ओ एन सोन वैली ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ माइंस आर कोरबा के ओ आर बी ए कोरबा छत्तीसगढ़ कोरबा छत्तीसगढ़ सिंगरौली मध्य प्रदेश सिंगरौली एस आई एन जी आर ए यू एल आई सिंगरौली ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश सिंगरौली ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश आई एम अगेन रिपीटिंग एस दामोदर वैली दामोदर वैली ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल एंड झारखंड दामोदर वैली ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल एंड झारखंड इन झारखंड माइंस आर झरिया एंड बोकारो इन वेस्ट बंगाल एस रानी गंज सेकेंड सोन वैली ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ सोन वैली ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ कोरबा एंड मध्य प्रदेश एस ए सिंगरौली थर्ड गोदावरी वैली ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश सिंगरैनी एस आई एन जी आर ई एन आई ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश महानदी वैली ऑफ उड़ीसा टलचर टी ए एल सी एच ए आर एंड लास्ट वधा वधा वैली ऑफ महाराष्ट्र डब्ल्यू ए आर डी एच ए W A R D H A. These are the important mines associated with the coal extraction in India of Gondwana age. Gondwana age. Now the next has a tertiary age of a coal. Tertiary age of coal extracted through Assam. Tertiary age of coal extracted through Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya. नागालैंड नागालैंड एज ऑफ कोल एक्सट्रैक्टेड टू द असम अरुणाचल प्रदेश नागालैंड एंड मेघालय नागालैंड एंड मेघालय क्लियर नेक्स्ट इज द पेट्रोलियम 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 petroleum is generally extracted through the crude oil crude oil c r u d e crude oil that crude oil which contains the several impurities their impurities are separate in a oil refineries the place where the impurities of iron separated known as a blast furnace the place where the impurities of crude oil separate is known as a oil refineries r e f i n e r i e s oil refineries through the crude oil we extract the different number of our products like as diesel naphtha n a p h t h a gasoline jet fuel kerosene coke petroleum lubricants synthetic rubber plastics etc i am again repeating as a through the crude oil in all refineries we can extract diesel petrol kerosene gasoline jet fuel lubricants plastics synthetic rubber naphtha n a p h t h a n a p h t h a oil refineries are known as a nodal industries mining is a killer industry iron and steel industries are the basic industries petrochemical industries petrochemical industries known as the nodal industries N O D A. The raw material used for 
fertilizer industries for manufacturing of fertilizers such fertilizers helps to increase the productivity of land productivity of land 